you guys came back! I knew you loved me! Ha 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 No hablo Japanese! Now that that weirdo is out of the way, we're the bittersweet gamers! Although admittedly the gaming part of that is uh, kind of thin this time, well, huh? I mean, don't, don't, don't split hairs. BSG? Maybe saying that would be better? We're BSG? It's at least kind of catchy and less out and out lying is the case, maybe? <laughs> Speaking of out and out lying, Boy. I'm the opinionator. I don't know if you thought that through as well as you thought you did. I'm we squared. Okay, so Danganronpa if, let's keep going. Maybe Makoto just died by having a spear thrust into him? <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. Great, we traded one weirdo for another. Why are you guys looking at me? It wasn't the spear, remember? Technicalities. And so, Mukuro fan fiction, here we are! I will kill you. Huh? Time had certainly stopped for Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student, hidden somewhere in the school. Watch out for her. She appears to be the main character of Danganronpa If. We never would have guessed if it not for her on the frickin' cover. I had to say that once. I know, I know. It was as if everything around her had frozen perfectly still. In the past, she was known as the ultimate soldier. She had experienced this feeling before during her time with the mercenary group Fenrir. Back when she was a Jaeger. Sorry, that's a reference to something else. In situations where she was surrounded by a hopeless number of enemies within the jungle or in a desert ruin. Why was she fighting in a desert ruin? The charging enemies seemed as though they were frozen in time, which allowed her to claim a decisive victory in all her battles. But this wasn't a battlefield, so why did this familiar sensation activate once again? Isn't it, though? I agree with this. In order to understand what had happened, Mukuro slowly tried to assess the current situation from within this frozen world. Ah, I see. Her stand can stop time for five seconds. Junko and Mukuro are both children of despair. But Junko and Oshima, the true ultimate despair, harbors a far deeper darkness within her. Though their last names are different, Mukuro is Junko's older sister, connected by the bonds of blood. I had wondered about that. She cooperated with Junko's hopeless plan and impersonated her under the pretense of participating in the killing game alongside her classmates. According to the plan, Mukuro was supposed to oppose Monokuma, who her sister was controlling, and be locked in a dungeon as punishment. I see! Now that makes sense. That's, I, I was wondering why she was always acting like that. And it also explains why she was just like, wait, this wasn't when she got stabbed. Yeah, like this wasn't supposed to happen right here. Isolated from the others, she would then escape the dungeon and perform various acts intended to deprive the students of hope. That was the role she had been assigned. When Makoto succumbed to his headache, Junko ordered her to see if the shock had caused him to remember anything that could make him a liability. He woke up as she was tending to him, so she made small talk with him, but she didn't notice any change in his behavior. Until this point, she was certain that there shouldn't be any problems. Nothing could possibly go wrong. She stomped on Monokuma like her sister ordered her to do, and flawlessly spoke the lines she was taught to memorize. Afterward, she would fall through a trap door into the dungeon and remain isolated from the other students. That was her role. She hadn't done anything wrong. There were no problems. Except that your sister is a psychopath. There were no problems. She repeated that to herself over and over like a silent prayer. But in that frozen moment in time, what she saw was... Not a trap door, but countless spears. One of them had skewered Makoto through his side. Why? Makoto? Why are there spears? Gungnir? I would have died if I hadn't moved. Did Junko mess up the plan? Yes, she accidentally activated all the spear launchers in the gym. Whoops, my bad! I'm sorry, the button was right next to the trap door button! No, Junko would never mess up. Was she trying to kill me? 
me? Makoto saved me? Why? Why did he say my name? Did his memories come back? Did I not realize that? Did I make a mistake? Is that why Junko got angry? Is this punishment? Is it my fault? No! Junko tried to kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Slowly, time came back to her world. Mukuro could feel her face turning pale as she slowly looked toward Makoto. The student's screams rang throughout the gym. Sayaka was probably the first one to scream. But who screamed first didn't matter to Mukuro. Pointless who screamed first. Makoto. Why? Makoto was the ultimate lucky student. He had been her classmate for the past two years, and now he was a sacrifice to despair. Not long ago, he'd given her an answer of sorts during their conversation in the nurse's office. He was just a pawn in the plan her sister had devised. But now, a feeling of doubt began forming in Mukuro's mind. Oh, yeah? I... What did I want from Makoto? As her heart churned restlessly, she continued to think. In return, I promise that if I do decide to kill someone, it won't be you. <laughs> Was I impersonating Junko then? Or did I really mean that? When did I start feeling this doubt? Just now, the moment he saved me? Or when we spoke in the nurse's office earlier? You mean, people aren't just a bunch of disposable, meaningless, empty tools? Nonsense. Espe That's crazy talk. Especially when they're nice to me? Wait a minute, maybe you mean my sister might actually be slightly less than completely sane? You know, of all the ultimate despairs, Mukuro seems the sanest. I have no idea. Everything we know about Mukuro... We have basically projected onto her, except for what we found out in this so far. I mean, that's a fair point, yeah. And for that matter, everything we know about the uh, other Ultimate Despairs, we just sort of imagined from the way they were like before they were Ultimate Despairs. All right, fine. Right on my parade, then. Maybe I will! Or when I first confronted him about this killing game before his memories returned. Or was it before even that? Mukuro stood there, confused and overwhelmed, as Makoto slowly opened his eyes, the spear still impaling him through the side. Ah, Mukuro. Makoto, are you okay? I've been better. Mukuro was no longer impersonating the ultimate fashionista. Looking up from the floor of the gym, Makoto asked, Why are you dressed up like Junko? He was smiling. Maybe he couldn't feel the pain anymore. Or maybe he was being affected by something else. I know they said there was a chemical agent. Plus and the button. Plus the electricity. Plus the electroshock. But it just, you can't help but think of Hifumi, you know, whose memories sort of came back a bit As after he, was, he yeah. sort of jogged himself out of death temporarily. Mm -hmm. But regardless... Makoto ignored the fact that he was dying just to give Mukuro his warm smile. I'm glad. I'm glad you're safe, Mukuro. As soon as she heard Makoto's weak, fading voice, something inside Mukuro snapped. From within the shell of despair she had built up, an intense emotion began flowing out. No. This is... All wrong. She couldn't hold back that emotion any longer. No. No. And for the first time in her entire life, Mukuro unleashed a scream into the world. Didn't Junko say something like since she was born, she, like when she was born, she didn't cry? Like herself? I don't remember. I wonder if Mukuro was similar. Either way... The very act of being an ultimate despair means that you don't experience or process emotion the same as other people. 
Yeah. You know, we just cleared Danganronpa 2, obviously. That's how, we, <laughs> how we're playing this. It doesn't mean that they can't, just that they don't, for whatever reason or events outside their control. or The within shell of it. despair they build up. Only Junko was the one who was... was completely was, empty. Yeah, and that that was just her. Nobody else was really like that. Yeah. Or, or had to be like that. Yeah, yeah. As Mukuro fell to her knees and clutched her head, a small shadow started walking toward her back. The stuffed animal that had been under her foot, Monokuma. His claws were extended, and he was no longer walking with his usual waddle. Sakura, it's time to shine! Please! Instead, he moved like a beast, silently stalking its prey as he slowly advanced within his target's blind spot. As he inched closer to Mukuro, Monokuma raised his razor-sharp claws, crouched on its haunches, and suddenly leapt toward the back of her neck. However, just before those claws could reach the paralyzed Mukuro, a dark shadow moved in from the side and swatted those claws away with one blow. Hot! His lunge deflected, Monokuma was sent flying through the air, spinning wildly before crashing into the wall. Damn you! What are you trying to do? Sakura Ogami, the ultimate martial artist, had just prevented another tragedy. She stood before Monokuma and addressed him in a loud, booming voice. Not only did you attempt to kill Junko for violating school regulations, you even attacked Makoto, who had nothing to do with this. Get him! Get the stupid <laughs> little bomb bear! If you plan to continue acting in such a savage manner, there is no reason for us to play along with your game. Not that there ever was before. Traitor or not, she never wanted to go along with this in any way, shape, or form. Obviously. You know, seeing something like this, or anything else really, but seeing something like this, what makes her think that the hostage... Yeah! Why should she trust Junko? Why should she assume she's going to do or treat her, treat the hostage fairly? Couldn't it also be said that by taking someone important to Sakura hostage in order to control her, that was a way of getting Sakura to not oppose her? Because Junko knew there's nothing she could have done to Sakura. Or at the very least that Sakura was a legitimate threat that she couldn't just easily overpower. Yeah. Byakuya Togami, the ultimate affluent progeny, smirked condescendingly at Sakura. Fool, one could say you've now violated school regulations with your senseless actions. After all, I'm an asshole at this point in the storyline. He looked as if he honestly did not care if his fellow students lived or died at all. As I said. Well, she merely deflected the headmaster's attack just now, so I do not think it truly counts as an act of violence. Like Byakuya, Celeste seemed unfazed as she chided him over his words. However, the extremely poorly timed banter between the two was enough to stir the stunned students to action. Makoto! Sayaka was the first one to run toward Makoto, who lay bleeding from his stomach. But Monokuma stopped her, shouting in a tone of voice that seemed completely out of character, almost as if he had lost control. Be careful! Don't get too close to those two! What?! Startled by Monokuma's desperate tone, Sayaka and the others stopped moving almost instinctively. The students looked around at each other. Instead of his usual playful gait, Monokuma walked toward them with deliberate, methodical steps. And then he suddenly blurted out something that took everyone, including Mukuro Ikusaba, by surprise. I'm sure you're probably confused by this sudden turn of events. But I want you guys to work together. What is going on exactly? Huh? As Mukuro slowly turned her head toward Monokuma, he pointed at her and yelled, Mukuro Ikusaba and her accomplice, Makoto Nagi, are the terrorists responsible for locking you all inside the academy. Ah, uh, keeping control at any cost, eh? Once again, time stopped for Mukuro. 
it's not really like time stopped. It's, you know, someone, of course, like... Someone with a lot of battle experience. Like someone in a crisis situation, like accelerating their information yeah. processing and thus their decision-making ability. Mm -hmm. Accelerate the OODA loop. <laughs> uh, ob uh, observe, orient, decide, act. Nonetheless, it is really interesting to see it applied to a situation like this, uh -huh, uh -huh. instead of hyperbolic fightings and stuff. <laughs> but this time, she wasn't the only one affected. Everyone seemed to be frozen in shock. Yes, let's just, you know, continue to believe Motokuma. After a few seconds of silence, Aoi Asahina, the ultimate swimming pro, spoke first. Huh? You're, you're kidding, right? I mean, Makoto is a terrorist? He's so wimpy, that's impossible. <laughs> and what's a Mukuro, anyway? Can you eat it? I mean, that's Junko. Monokuma began slowly explaining to Aoi. The real Junko must be imprisoned somewhere in this school. Worst case scenario, she might be killed. Mukuro must have researched which one of you would be easiest for her to impersonate and hid among you all by pretending to be her. She was probably trying to make sure the killing game went smoothly. Suddenly, Monokuma's hands and feet began jerking in an awkward motion as he looked at the other students and introduced himself. What? I'm Beshki Madurai, the ultimate hacker. You can all trust me. I am in no way trying to bamboozle you. Did you say bamboozle? Who even uses a word like bamboozle? Yasuhiro, you're a bamboozler too, right? You talk to him. Hey, I'm a palm tree, not a bamboo. I'm your upperclassman. I hacked into the academy from the outside, and I was finally able to take control of Motokuma's body just a little while ago. Take control? For, from who? From the head of the terrorist organization that's controlling this robot from the outside. What? What are you saying, Junko? I mean, there's no way that's real. Either a whole new set of characters has appeared and taken over the antagonist, or Junko's just trying to reassert her control over the situation. 100% that's what's happening. Mukuro trembled as she heard the words coming out of Monokuma's mouth. For a brief moment, she clung to the hope that her sister wasn't trying to kill her. But as soon as that hope was born, it was immediately consumed by despair. Incidentally, if Mukuro is really the ultimate despair, as we had heard, or an ultimate despair, well, we learned a lot about several ultimate despairs in the previous game. Indeed. Or wouldn't she actually not be surprised that her sister was trying to kill her? All I'm getting at is that she's not batshit crazy. Right, right. Like the mo like the remnants of despair were. And, and Junko, of course. Junko's in a league all of her own. Junko had the power to transform hope into despair, whatever that means. And apparently just create AIs. She would never let anyone hack her that easily. There was only one explanation. Junko Inoshima was pretending to be someone named Beshiki in order to frame Mukuro and Makoto. Eh, Beshiki, it doesn't sound like a real person. Besides, I, I see Beshiki and I think Keshiki, which is like, uh, 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 like the landscape, scenery, scenery. That's what ah, I was looking ah. for. And, and so it just makes me think different scenery. I understand that's not true, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. It was as though Junko was using Mukuro's survival as a branching path to lead the students to a different despair. Like it's a different route or something. <laughs> Monokuma continued talking, telling the students more lies designed to prod them to action. On your first day at Hope's Peak Academy, you guys were exposed to sleeping gas, knocked unconscious, and taken hostage. If you listen to what I say, you will all get a pony. Mukuro and Makoto are probably the only operatives that the terrorists set inside the school. Um, I don't want a pony. Could I just have some donuts? The pony, uh, dispenses donuts. Really? Asahina, no. Oh. That means they probably know how to escape from here. And then, Monokuma turned to face Mukuro. 
Mukuro Ikusaba was a member of a mercenary group called Fenrir. She's a wanted criminal who's killed over 10 people associated with the school. So don't get soft and think you can capture her alive. In fact, that's exactly what the cops told me. So the moment I saw an opening, I tried hacking the trap they set and tried to kill her. But what about Makoto? Monokuma gave a cold, emotionless answer to Sayaka's question. My guess is that a measly little ultimate lucky student didn't stand a chance of defying a group like Fenrir. He was probably threatened and forced to cooperate before you entered the school. Or, judging from his earlier actions, maybe Mukuro seduced him. Sayaka's face went pale when she heard that answer, and she immediately stopped talking. Hmm. Mukuro raised her head and shouted. You're wrong! Makoto isn't a terrorist! You all have to believe me! The whole gym fell silent. Hmm. This early in the game, so to speak. Well, it's even more confusing. It's yeah. even more confusing, plus this just happened. Makoto is likely about to die and or has already died. All this junk is coming out, and there is almost a physical altercation. I mean, how can anybody know anything? Yeah. There hasn't been any sort of a routine that's set in either. And then, as if he was speaking for everyone there, Kiyotaka stepped forward and nervously asked, Hold on. What do you mean Makoto isn't a terrorist? It sounds like you're saying that there's no doubt that you, in fact, are a terrorist. Ha! <laughs> I could be sharp sometimes. I ask that you correct yourself at once and say, we are not terrorists. Celeste began expressing her own doubts as well. It is strange. Does it not seem odd that she is so protective of someone we all just met a few days ago? It may seem strange to you, Celeste, but some people actually care about other people. What? What sort of an attachment can you have to something that isn't money and your own indulgent desires? Well, I was going to say something, but Celeste summed it up pretty well. Mukuro stood in silence. Realizing that she looked extremely suspicious <laughs> because nobody has their memories except for you and yeah. Makoto. <laughs> oh! The other students' faces began to fill with suspicion and doubt as they realized they weren't looking at the real Junko and Oshima. Byakuya pushed up his glass. <laughs> Typo! <laughs> Yakuya pushed up his glassed and began coldly pointing out what seemed out of place to him. I heard that fool Makoto, or whatever his name is, call you Mukuro instead of Junko. How would Makoto know that your name is really Mukuro if he just met you not that long ago? Hey, that kind of rhymed. That's what you focused on. <laughs> That's what you focused on? Th that's... I've also heard of Fenrir, continued Byakuya. As I recall, its members have a tattoo somewhere on their body. <sighs> Instinctively, Byakuya's words put Mukuro into a calm state of mind. Ooh, are we going to do a strip search? In hostile situations, her defensive reflexes as the ultimate soldier often manifested themselves. Mukuro's tattoo was on the back of her right hand. She wondered how she could hide this from the other students without also calling attention to it. Well, I mean, makeup for one. But in the end, this concern was in vain. If the police's records are true, she should have a tattoo on the back of her right hand. As Monokuma freely divulged that information. All right! Cried Kiyotaka, his voice filled with enthusiasm. Show us the back of your right hand and prove your innocence! Monokuma dispensed another unnecessary remark. Make sure you look real close. She might have covered it up with foundation. Junko had ordered Mukuro to hide her tattoo with foundation, so... Monokuma's information was entirely true. There was nothing Mukuro could do except stay quiet. However, she wasn't staying quiet because her identity was about to be exposed. 
He was struck by the realization that her sister was completely serious about pinning this on her. I mean, guys, can, can we maybe try and get Makoto to the nurse's office or something first? Huh? What are you talking about? It's my destiny to die here. Oh, sweet death. <laughs> what? What is that? Huh? 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 Oh, it feels so comfortable and natural. Oh, God. <laughs> this is how it happened! I'm just kidding. Why the hesitation? Shouted the foolishly honest Kiyotaka. As my classmate, I have complete faith in you! From behind him, Hifumi Yamada, the ultimate fanfic creator, murmured to himself as cold sweat ran down his cheeks. Well, look at that. I guess this is what they call a checkmate. Huh? Why don't you just fess up already, you fucking bastard? In contrast to Hifumi, Mondo Oada, the ultimate biker gang leader, was royally pissed. It was really easy to pick out who was saying that line. However, there were some students who were busy questioning Monokuma instead of Mukuro. Hey, you're not coming to save us? Shouted Leon Kuwata, the ultimate reluctant baseball star. You should hurry up and charge in here already! Monokuma looked at Leon and shook his head softly. The police can't help you right now. Not only are you guys hostages, it's possible that the entire school has been rigged with explosives and poisonous gas. I hacked into this Monokuma robot to investigate that for myself. Th then what about everyone on that DVD? What about everyone outside the school? Asked Sayaka. The memory of the DVD she was forced to watch yesterday still weighed heavily on her mind, but Monokuma didn't have a clear answer. I don't know anything about any DVDs, but there are definitely terrorists causing havoc out here. Law enforcement around the world is in shambles trying to deal with this. That's impossible! Sayaka shuddered and collapsed to her knees. Sayaka! Next to her, Shihiro Fujisaki, the ultimate programmer, was unsure about what she should do. Behind her, two other girls stood silently. The first was Tolko Fukawa, the ultimate writing prodigy. He seemed to be trying very hard not to look at Makoto's back as he lay bleeding. Or everything would just get worse. The other was a quiet girl who hadn't talked about herself much, named Kyoko Kirigiri. Unlike Toko, Kyoko was watching everything intently, as if she were studying the scene of a crime. From Makoto's breathing patterns to subtle changes in Mukuro's facial expression, nothing was escaping her attention. It is, it really is just fan fiction, isn't it? I it mean, is, it's, yeah. It's pretty interesting, but it's neat seeing all the characters in a completely different situation. And acting how you kind of think they would. And it's also nice to see all of them. Yeah, it's nice have, to see them all again. I have no idea how long this is going to go. I mean, I'm assuming it's probably going to be something like like 60 to 90,000 words. Like, it's going to be much, much, much shorter than the game, <laughs> obviously, but... It's just interesting seeing this sort of thing. What a neat idea. Suddenly, Toko began nervously talking to Sakura. S -s so anyway, let's just say that Mukuro woman or whoever over there is a t -t terrorist. H hurry up and b -b beat her to death or s something. We don't know that yet, said Sakura. My fists do not mete out justice based on simple speculation. Yeah, don't do what the bear tells you to do. This part is really simple. Sakura tried to get nearer to Makoto to examine his wounds, but Monokuma stood in her way, shouting, Don't come any closer! This meant that Mukuro was the only one who could get close to Makoto. Why? She had ended countless lives on the battlefield. She knew from experience. If she didn't treat Makoto's wounds, he would die. His wounds were not immediately fatal, but if he continued losing blood, he would eventually slip into shock and die shortly thereafter. Please, you need to treat Makoto first. Absolutely not, said Byakuya, harshly interrupting Mukuro. Tying you up and examining the back of your right hand is our first priority. 
Hey, Makoto's in danger. Now's not the time for that, said Aoi as she cast a worried glance at Makoto. She was still having trouble understanding the situation and hadn't decided if Makoto was suspicious or not. But she ca as a caring human being, she wants to help him. Byakuya was about to snap back at her, but Mukuro's actions stunned him into silence. She took a deep breath, and then Mukuro removed the blonde wig from her head. Okay! Where there were two long, blonde pigtails only a moment before, there was now short black hair. She cleared her face of all emotion, and when she spoke, her voice rang throughout the gym. I'm not Junko Enoshima. My name is Mukuro Ikusaba. The students stared wide-eyed at her open confession. If this is how they're going to get help from Makoto, then she's just going to reveal it. She's already been called Mukuro There's and, and been outed in some way. There's no point in trying to pretend... Yeah! ...anything. All she did was remove her wig and clear her emotions. But in doing so... The person the students had recognized as Junko and Oshima vanished from their sight. The terrorist <laughs> that had taken her place continued to speak in a calm, stoic tone. I helped lock everyone inside this academy. The confession on a seaside cliff moment has finally arrived! Hifumi blurted out, God, pay attention to this, the moment, darn it! Boob lust! Whoa, 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 Wigs are against school regulations, Junko! I, I mean, Mukuro? Shouted Kiyotaka. I don't know why you're so surprised. We gotta be us. Did you say boob lust? I don't know where it came from either. Facing Mukuro? <laughs> As if stirred by their cries of excitement, the other students began clamoring amongst themselves, saying stupid things. Huh? So <laughs> Makoto's wounds are like... Real? Does that mean that stuff about terrorists and whatever is all real too? No, we're in a special event that's an escape room, man. Oh man, I love those! So everything that's happened these past few days, was it a bunch of staged events? As the reality of the situation began dawning on Yasuhiro, all Leon could say to him was, Ahem! Shut the hell up! Byakuya just remained calm and addressed Mukuro in a condescending manner. This had to be pointed out because normally <laughs> Byakuya does not address people in a condescending manner. What does your group want? If you were after money, you would have already tried to negotiate with me. If I were after money, I wouldn't have tried to negotiate with you. I know what's going on outside. Touché. Of course, I'd rather let them die than surrender to your ransom demands. Our purpose is to fill the world with despair. <laughs> Byakuya scoffed at this notion and began to speak once again. Huh, I see. Monokuma said something similar. So that ideology is what fuels your terrorism. It's true. If you did anything to me, you would certainly fill the world with despair. But obviously, that would be impossible for you. Aoi couldn't believe what Byakuya was saying and frowned as she muttered, How self-centered can you be? Very. You're a jerk. After confirming that Byakuya had no more questions for her, Mukuro looked at Makoto, whose breathing had slowed, and let her voice show some emotion. But Makoto has nothing to do with this. You can't believe what Monokuma says. What did you say, bitch? shouted Mondo. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're a terrorist, just like Motokuma said. Mukuro looked away from Mondo and continued speaking. That's true, but Makoto isn't involved at all. Celeste coldly brushed her objection aside. I do not think trying to protect him will do you any good. After all, we all heard Makoto call you by your real name. That's... She had no words. Because the only thing she could say is like, oh yeah, you all lost your memories and he got them back. And then they're just going to be like, eyebrow raise. Well, you know, it's why you can't dump all the plot twists on everyone all at once. She had no words. There was nothing she could say to protect Makoto. 
even though Makoto was truly innocent. Though Mukuro was the ultimate soldier, her powers were largely limited to battle. Even a normal high school student could outwit her when it comes to debate and negotiation. If she were the ultimate negotiator, she might be able to convince them that their memories had really been erased, but her, in her current situation, if she tried to bring up their memory loss, yeah, just like you said, yeah. they would think it was a desperate excuse. Because Monokuma hadn't established that yet. Even Mukuro knew that. But even if she didn't know what to say, she still knew what to do. Right now, we need to treat Makoto first. And then... She started walking toward Makoto as if nothing had happened. To the others, it seemed like Mukuro had decided to abruptly change the subject. Hold it. We will immediately take Makoto to the nurse's office for treatment. However, we must tie you up. This was Sakura's honest demand. But there was no way Mukuro could accept it. If she was separated from Makoto, there'd be no telling what Monokuma would do to him. Yeah, at this point, all the rules of the game are out the window. And Junko never cared about the rules at all. That's true. I mean, she tried to assassinate Makoto, for goodness sake. And she did assassinate her sister! And between Mondo's hot temper and Byakuya's cold heart, Makoto could easily sustain further injuries under the pretense of interrogation. Hmm. Furthermore, among these students, Mukuro knew she was the only one who had experience treating wounds due to her time with Fenrir. After mulling that over, she narrowed her eyes and went silent. Her mind was made up. She was determined to fight her way out of here and escape with Makoto. <laughs> oh! I apologize, but I need you to fall asleep right now. As she said that, Sakura instantly positioned herself behind Mukuro. She was completely within her blind spot. To a normal person... It would have seemed like Sakura had suddenly vanished. After moving faster than any human being could see, Sakura's equally fast hands launched a blow toward the back of Mukuro's neck. However, sorry Sakura, but I need to get out of here. Mukuro parried Sakura's fist with a spin roundhouse kick. Well, I mean, Sakura isn't a soldier. She is a martial artist, but... Mm. Sakura raised an eyebrow at the unexpected counterattack. Mukuro tried to use the momentum of her kick to sweep Sakura's feet out from under her. However, Sakura dodged and instinctively struck back against Mukuro's pivot leg. But Mukuro was faster and jumped up, aiming a tornado kick <laughs> at, at Sakura's chin. Patsumaki said Bukyak! Sakura deflected the attack with one arm, then both combatants leapt backwards, glared, and charged simultaneously. Meanwhile, the clash of their fighting spirit caused the floor to crack and people to get blown backwards. <laughs> well, that does happen in Danganronpa 2. <laughs> Every blow they dealt was parried and countered by the other, and though they were both unarmed, the sound of their battle echoed throughout the gym. It was like a typhoon had been compressed to the size of a car and set loose inside the gym. The other students were powerless to stop them or even watch them, really. All they could do was stare at the breathtaking dance of death unfolding before them. They're moving so fast, my eyes can't keep up. You're looking in the wrong direction. Oh! After ten minutes had passed, the enormous sound of one final impact rang throughout the gym. The two warriors leapt back once again and breathed heavily as they stared each other down. My mistake. Though it's only been a few days, I cannot believe I did not notice such an impressive fighter was hiding among us. In addition to the surprise Sakura felt, it was as if the battle had left her energized. <laughs> Mukuro, on the other <laughs> hand, looked down at her arm, confirmed it had been wounded during the battle, and thought to herself, Oh God, I can't keep this up forever. I bet Mukuro's trying not to kill Sakura. I don't think she can. You're probably right. In a straight-up fight? I mean, isn't she actually specifically acknowledging that That's in the line point. she's about to say? I mean, I suppose she could assassinate her or something. Right, that's kind of what I was thinking, is like Mukuro wasn't trying to kill her, so it's the fight's going... Sakura had, isn't going to let her out of her sight, so there's nothing she can do. That's, that's true, that's and true, you're fact, right. Mukuro can't get away to do something different because Sakura's in her way... You're right. ...and won't let her get away. 
It's like when you're in a fight, you can't just turn and run easily. <laughs> you might be able to, but you have to create that opportunity. This isn't entirely the most appropriate analogy, but I'm gonna get it anyway! That's and, never stopped us. In like melee combat, you know, in the Middle Ages and the Dark Ages and such, very few deaths occurred in a direct clash because everyone was actually competent. It's when one side turned and ran, that's mm. when people started dying. I see. She's strong. I don't think Sakura is even taking this seriously right now. Despite being constantly surrounded by firearms, blades, traps, and explosives during her time with Fenrir, this was the first time she'd ever been wounded. Oh, God! Mukuro was powerless before the might of the woman known as the ultimate martial artist and the strongest woman in the world. At the very Ooh. least, engaging in unarmed combat with her is entirely okay. a losing proposition. Just as I thought. I can't beat Sakura with my bare hands alone. If she had been directly ordered to kill Sakura, Mukuro would have opted to either snipe her from a distance <laughs> or poison her. At this close range, she'd need an assault rifle just to stand a fighting chance. That's terrifying! I don't have time for this! She looked at Makoto and confirmed that his breathing had grown even shallower. I need to hurry. Mm, I guess saying I'll let you tie me up after we treat Makoto wouldn't work either because then she'd still be helpless if Junko tried something. Mm, that's a good point. Because that would seem like a compromise. That seems or... like a good one. Or Like, look, you can see that I'm being honest here. Just let me treat this guy and then you can do whatever. But the problem isn't the students. The problem is Monokuma. But... If she explained if she explained her fears, then Sakura could guard him, but I don't think she trusts them. Yeah, that's I think I, that's what that's the, problem the problem is. If she felt like she could trust them to guard Makoto, then this situation might turn out differently. Sakura and Aoi haven't even had a chance to bond yet. This is at the very I know, beginning. I know. But at that moment, she had no one to turn to for help. Suddenly, Mukuro had an idea. It was true that gaining an ally in this situation was impossible, but huh? she could still turn one person <gasps> into her enemy's enemy. And it happened to be the person she's fighting. Mukuro took a deep <laughs> breath before she charged at Sakura. This is dirty. Then she immediately fainted and charged at a different girl. Oh! Tolko, who had been cowering in fear from the battle between Sakura and Mukuro in the corner of the gym. Mm, this is bad. Sakura was caught off guard and tried to run after her, but Mukuro was for the moment one step ahead and reached Toko first. Huh? Why me? I'm sorry. Wait, hold on up. A Murgle Burgle Glurg Burg Burgle! <laughs> Mukuro jabbed Toko in her solar plexus, and she fell into her arms. Kiyotaka and Aoi yelled out in shock. This is bad. She plans to use Toko as a hostage. T Toko! In contrast to their shocked faces, Byakuya just snickered and coldly remarked, I am somehow set at ease by this. <laughs> and Byakuya's <laughs> heart has, has been lightened. You fool. Do you really think we care if you take someone we just met a few days ago as your hostage? You know, I seem to recall all this <laughs> all this yelling and ranting that I did about how important it is to it was to to form bonds with each other at the beginning of Dongan Rompa 1 uh -huh. and then Dongan Rompa 2 and this in if so far seem to have completely vindicated everything <laughs> I was saying. Huh? Mukuro just softly glanced at Byakuya and replied, Yeah, well, you don't know shit about what's gonna happen <laughs> next. You didn't meet her a few days ago. What did you say? You met her two years ago. Huh? Byakuya scowled. Mukuro ignored him and held her bloody arm in front of Toko's face. And then she yelled into her ears, Wake up! Genocide Jack! <gasps> It seemed so <laughs> random and out of place. Why would Mukuro <laughs> mention the name of a notorious serial killer right now? 
The students looked at each other with confusion when suddenly their brains were totally unable to handle <laughs> every plot twist being dumped at, dumped at them all at once. <laughs> Toko, who'd been groaning in pain, suddenly kicked off of the floor of the gym with renewed vigor. She <laughs> leapt into the air much higher than any normal human should have been able to. <laughs> what the hell? While hovering several meters in midair, Toko twirled faster than a professional figure skater. Genocide! Drill! <laughs> <laughs> this caused her skirt to flutter, revealing multiple pairs of sparkling scissors. Countless tally marks were scratched into her legs like a kill count carved into a fighter jet. If not for this situation, <laughs> Toko's glamorous jumps and spins would have been a sight to behold. The girl once known as Toko Fukawa crackled what? Cackled. Crackled. Well, whatever she did, she did it wildly, her red eyes sparkling as her absurdly long tongue flopped out of her mouth. <laughs> oh my god, that is so gross. <laughs> You call for me, and so I appear! I've got a murder, I owe you, for why owe you? <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, I am terrified to my core. Toko? The situation had changed so drastically that even Sayaka, who was silent until now, spoke up. Hey, hey, you flash in the pan! Don't treat Genocide Jack like that depressing little four eyes! That dirty girl doesn't bathe herself at all, so I gotta put in five times the effort to rub myself down in the shower. Well, he for me, what do you think? I approve! Eee. Toko's sudden <laughs> change in personality sent the students clamoring among themselves. Uh, hey, hey, what the hell does that mean? Monokuma just shook his head. There are some things even I don't understand. Do you believe me? The students continued to panic at the strange turn of events. <laughs> Toko, now calling herself Genocide Jack, took out a set of scissors from under her skirt and snipped them with glee as she looked around the gym. No, not my hair! Man, it's been a while since I got to stretch my legs. So what were you guys going to do here at the gym while I was snoozing away? <laughs> Have an orgy? He for me, somehow, I suspect this is your fault. I, uh, approve? Hmm, I understand. I totally understand. You guys need me to cut up your clothes so you can feel even naughtier. <laughs> yeah, right! Why the hell would I do that for you dumbasses? My scissors are only meant for cutting the supple, tender flesh of adorable boys. <laughs> oh my God. Genocide Jack was causing a ruckus, but when she saw Makoto laying on the floor, she tilted her head once again. Huh? Big Mac, you're like totally about to die. What's the deal? Did the world fill you with so much despair that you all came here to commit mass suicide? Ugh. That's so hot. But why are you starting without me? T Toko? Get a hold of yourself! Oh, she does. Genocide Jack ignored Aoi and let her emotions run unchecked, jumping and dancing with excitement as she held her scissors. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mukuro's picking up Makoto and sneaking away. <laughs> ah, jeez! I wanted to stab Big Mac's side myself! This spot right here, where the ribs are kind of showing already. He's not even screaming right now, though. What does that mean? Oh, well. Maybe I can just get used to this feeling of alienation instead. <laughs> I feel as though I should react in some way, but all I can think of is this sort of cold emptiness inside my heart. I have no idea what's going on anymore! Not that I ever did! This is all the aliens' fault, the occult is bullcrap. That's why the episode has to end! What? No! There's only a few more lines in this scene, right? Yasuhiro buried his head into his arms, but no one was paying attention to him. Like normal. Nor should they, really. The student's attention was entirely focused on Genocide Jack. 
Using that to her advantage, Mukuro began sneaking over to Makoto. Hold it! As she cautiously picked him up, she confirmed that his body temperature was starting to decrease. I can still make it there in time. He certainly is the ultimate lucky student. He's got so much blood in him. Though she was carrying another person, Mukuro managed to soften the sound of her footsteps as she ran for the gym's doors. By the time the students heard Mukuro open the door, it was already too late. She'd managed to escape the gym with Makoto. However, not everyone was unaware of what Mukuro was doing. Possibly Kyoko. Monokuma saw her movements out of the corner of his eye, but chose not to tell the students. And... One other person, just like you thought, Billy. Kyoko Kirigiri. 30%! Why did you say that? I don't know. She saw Mukuro carried Makoto away, but didn't inform the others as she watched them leave in silence. As everyone wrestled with their own personal thoughts and speculations and crazed reactions to the absolute insane things going on, Hope's Peak Academy began walking a path toward a completely different chaos. Okay, Yasuhiro, now the aliens can make the occult episode end. All right! Why am I ending every episode so far? Osvierat to Polizia! No hablo polaco! And yet, for some reason, I can say Polish in Spanish. Ah! <sighs> uh, I mean! <laughs>